Hello, everyone. Today, I'm feeling really happy and excited. And I truly hope you're feeling the same way, too. Now, today, I'm going to demonstrate an experiment to you. This experiment is testing the effect of different sugar concentration on potato tissue. In fact, this experiment is about osmosis. Now, what I'm going to do, to do for you today is to walk you through the apparatus needed. I'm also going to demonstrate some live methods or the steps. So I'm going to actually show you the real footage of what I did. And I'm also going to show you some observation that you can make and also results. I'm also going to walk you through possible um, types of graphs that you could have and also some useful calculations that you need for this experiment. All right, so let's jump into the apparatus at this point. Now, the apparatus needed for this experiment, you're going to need a um, measuring cylinder. I have four measuring cylinders. You can use one, but I like to use different measuring cylinders for my different concentrations so I don't cross-contaminate. All right? You also need some test tubes. In fact, you need four test tubes for this experiment. You need a test tube rock to hold your test tube. You need sugar beaker you need water and i recommend distilled water you also need steering rod spatula and dropper you need a large potato or a well really medium sized large potato is fine i have two potatoes because definitely in experiment things could go wrong so i like to have extra just in case i have to do something over you also need a centimeter ruler you need a cork borer, which is very important for this experiment. And you need something to cut, so you need a knife and a blade. Now, I'm going to quickly remind you now about the apparatus needed. So just take a quick note of all the apparatus needed for this experiment. Now, the first thing you want to do is to label your test tubes. Now, I label my test tubes in terms of the percentage sugar concentration that I will be using. You can label yours in terms of numbers. You can label one, two, three, four. You can label A, B, C, D, whatever you prefer. But I like to label according to what I am using. All right? Now, once you finish labeling your test tube, what you want to do next is to pour some water nice and slowly into your beaker. All right, so once you have the required amount of water into your beaker, what you want to do next is to add some sugar. And you want to add enough sugar in your beaker until no more sugar can be dissolved. So you want to give it a really good mix and mix in that sugar. All right? So you want to make sure that at least you see some sugar particles at the bottom of your beaker. And once you mix that thoroughly, then you're ready to go to your next step. Now, your next step will be to measure out the different level of concentration of the sugar solution. The first one I'm going to measure is a 50 ml. It's a 50% actually. So I'm going to work this out. I'm going to put in my 5 ml first, put in 5 ml. And you can use a dropper if you have excess and just bring it back down to the correct measurement. You want to stay at eye level to measure this. Now, once you have your 5 ml, you want to pour 5 more ml of distilled water into it to bring it up to 10. So there was 5 ml of the concentrated solution and 5 ml of distilled water. Pour it in your 50% um, test tube. That's a 50% concentrated sugar solution. The next one I'm going to measure out is my 25%. Or to get this, I want to put in 2.5 ml of the concentrated sugar solution first. Again, be extremely careful while measuring this. All right, what I'm going to do, I'm, let me just restart this real quick. All right, so 2.5, very slow. You could go um, below first, and then you can slowly top it up. All right, once you've done that, you want to pour in now your distilled water and bring it up to 10 um, ml. All right, and that will be your 25% sugar concentrated solution. Now, what you want to do is to make sure, once you measure all of them, now I'm going to show you how to measure the 100% and the 0%. In fact, let me go through all. 
Now, to get to your 100%, what you'll do is just to put 10 ml of the concentrated sugar solution in your test tube. That's just direct, right? Now, the 50%, just to remind you how I did it, I put 5 ml of the concentrated sugar solution and 5 ml of the distilled water. For the 25%, what I did is I put the 2.5 ml of the sugar um, solution, the concentrated sugar solution, and 7.5 um, ml of distilled water so notice all the measurement um, goes up to 10 ml okay and of course the last one which is zero percent this is no sugar at all so it's just directly 10 ml of distilled water all right so notice all the levels will be at the same because they're the same measurement and once you have done that you're ready to go to your next step now your next step is to cut your ends of a potato cut both bo both ends off so you could stand properly all right so once you have done that you're going to make some um, strips from your potatoes so you're going to put a cork board down into the potato you can use a pencil that the, the eraser is removed or a crayon pencil to re release the strip from your bore i'm going for my second one now all right so this is my second one coming out all uh, right, you need four strips. So this is my third strip. In, press down, turn, remove, and release. Now, I'm going to show you something that you should not do. If you go close to the previous um, insertions or even slant your bore, you realize the strip will not be good. This is not a good strip. Let's just get rid of this one. All right, so you should not do it that way. Now, what you want to do is to create a nice good distance away from your previous insertions so you can get it nice and easy. So this is now my fourth um, strip now a nice easy four strips all right so an alternative method that you can do if you do not have a cork borer is simply to cut nice strips down in, in your potato you want to make sure you cut nice and straight so you maintain good um, shape of a potato and you want to cut them down nicely so all the strips will be relatively the same thickness all right and you could compare them with my um, cork borer strips that i have before all right so once i've done that now you can go into your measurement what i want to do is to measure all these strips to the same length all right so i prefer you to use whole number using whole number is easier in terms of a documentation and record so i'm gonna cut this down to seven which is my shortest strip to seven so because that's my nearest whole number all right going this way if the ends are not so straight you could straighten them by using the blade okay now i want to get seven there you go okay this one now all right so let's put it down a little bit oh right there great okay so this now my other seven all right my last strip to go now there you go cut it down and nicely cut nice all right so that's my fourth um strip all right, so we can move on now to the next step is to insert each of the strip into a test tube. All right, and this will be almost the final thing to do. All right, but what I want to do when you finish inserting your strip is to make sure you record and you note exactly what is what you can observe the thing. And make sure you note also the text of a potato before you put them into the test tube. All right, just remind you about that one. All right, so what you're going to do now is to leave the experiment undisturbed for 24 hours. All right, so you're finished with the first segment. You're coming back now after 24 hours. So what will you do after 24 hours? Now, once you come back to the lab, what you want to do is to now observe. Now, this is the result of what was done for, from the previous day. So obviously you can notice here that there's a difference in the length or thickness of the potatoes just by looking into the test tubes. So you notice the one with the 0% um, sugar, it is really large in the test tube. And the one with the 100% sugar um, solution is really the smallest one out of all four. Okay, so notice the size is decreasing going that way, right? But you want to do some, pre some precise measurements, so let's go into it. All right, so what I want to do first to prevent any form of mistake is to document my percentage or my uh, potato strips. You can say potato strip one, two, three, whatever you want to use is fine. But I'm using my uh, percentage of the sugar solution. 
So what I'm going to do now is to pour the water from the test tube. So that's my 0%. And I feel it is really, really, really turgid. All right. And so I'll go to my 25%, remove the water out, All right, the solution out, and then put it there to make sure it's there, my 50%. And once you have done that, you go to the 100% as well. And once you complete that, you want to jump into the next segment. The next segment is really to remeasure your strips. So this will be my 0% and I'm measuring that. Um, you can feel the texture as well that there is about 7.3. Now my second one is 25. Well, no change in that one, but it feels a little bit more turgid than before, than the previous day. This one is really, really flaccid, so soft and flexible. Okay, let's measure that. Okay, there you go. Okay, that. There is my 6.5. All right, and then my last one. Wow, this one is really, really flaccid. Look how flexible it is. All right, so measuring that. No, this is, okay, 6.2 is good. All right, so that's 6.2 there. And so now once you have all that, you want to go to your next step. You can actually feel the, the, the strips, compare them, put them beside each other, see the difference in, in the length of them. Notice a big difference, right? And once you've completed that, now you want to jump into recording your observation and your results just to make sure you have accurate um, documentation so you can do your report properly. All right, so what I want to do now, I'm going to show you pretty much the observation that I took. So what I did is to create a chart and I put my potato in the various solutions. So I record my solutions here. You can put potato strip one, two, three, four. Again, is your preference, right? But I, but you need to indicate what solution you're using somewhere by using a key or something. But you must have some indication where um, was each potato strip, all right? So before the experiment, um, all the strips, they were turgid. Potato was really turgid, right? But after 24 hours, I realized that um, the potato strips that were in the 0% and the 25%, they were turgid. In fact, 0% was much more turgid compared to 25%. And you can make a notation of that below your chart, right? The 50%, it was really, it was flaccid, really. But the 100% was extremely flaccid. All right, so they were um, flaccid after 24 hours. All right, and of course, you could make, um, explain the difference in terms of the level of turgidity in each potato strip below the chart. Now, for your result, what you want to do again is to indicate which part of the strip you're referring to. I use my um, solution as a guide. And so the original length, if you notice, I cut down all the strips before the experiment on, the day, on day one to seven um, centimeter. And then when I look on the second day, there was a difference in the strip. And so each strip, there was some form of difference, right? Now, what I wanted to note, if you notice uh, my first strip, it increased to 7.3, all right? I want to note something. Please not discuss or write in your report that the potato strips, um, the potato strips grew. No, there was no growth. Growth only takes place when they produce new cells. What happened to the strips, they either increase or decrease or pretty much stay the same, depending on what value you get. Now, my potato strip, my first one um, that was placed in the 0%, that one increased um, in length. And so the difference in length is a 0 0.3 increase. And it works out to be 4.2% um, increase. My 25% remained the same. So there was 0% um, change in the length. And then there's 0% um, change. Uh, my 50%, it, in, it decreased to 6.5. So there's a difference with 0 0.5 and it works out to be 7.1% um, change. For the 100% um, solution, it, decreases, it decreased to 6.2, which worked out to be 0.8 um, change in length. And that worked out to be about 11.4% change in length let me quickly show you how i work out these per uh, percentages so i'm gonna record the first one um, for you to see so what you want to do is to put the change in length over the original multiplied by 100 percent so it'd be 0 0.3 which is the difference over the original length multiplied by 100 percent you get 4.2 percent as the change percentage change 
All right, so truly I hope this was really helpful for you. Now the graphs that you can have here now, my graph, I, I have a title, I have my labelings and my axis. Now my title is saying graph showing the difference or the change in length of potato strips in different concentration of sugar of sugar solutions, right? Now on my y-axis, I have my length in centimeter and my x-axis, I put my potatoes there. Notice again, I use my color code. My green bars refer to my original length. My um, pink bars refer to the final length. All right, so once you have a graph nicely labeled, um, your graph sh should be big as well, at least over half your graph page. You don't want it to be too small. A small graph is really not appropriate in science at all. The bigger graph is, the better it is. All right, so at least you could compare and do your, your accuracy in terms of analyzing your result. All right, so once you've done that, you know, you pretty much are complete. You could do your discussions and so on and do the other portions of your experiment um, report. Now at this time, I'm going to finish up and I want to tell you that I truly appreciate you watching these lessons. And I want to tell you that today is a great day to be happy. In fact, every day is a new day for a new opportunity to be happy. Continue to progress until we meet again. Stay safe.